Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today, taking a quick break from Michael Dudikoff. Um, we're going to jump right back into that after this. But I wanted to take the time today to do this video to talk about uh, me going to Creature Feature Weekend uh, 2021 or 2021 or whatever year analogy number thing you want to use. Um, but finally, went to a convention and uh, just wanted to take the time today to talk to you guys all about it. Uh, but before we get into that, if anybody would like to help contribute to the channel by sending in a paid request, you may do so down below in the description box. There's a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big. No amount is too small. It does not have to pertain to just movie reviews. It could be TV shows, cartoons, comic books, music, video games. Uh, rants, commentaries, random discussions, whatever you guys want to see me cover here on the channel. Send that in through the PayPal account, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. For anyone that has sent in a paid request, I thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. It means you guys actually care what I say and do here on the channel, and you guys want to see different videos from me. So there you go. So anyway, let's get into Creature Feature Weekend, and I know my hair is all jacked up, but uh, please uh, forgive me on that one. But Creature Feature Weekend is a horror convention held in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, which is about 30 minutes from my house. Of course, Gettysburg, ugh, Gettysburg already can't talk, is where they had one of the most famous battles in any war, one of the biggest and most violent battles in any war, and um, again, 30 minutes from my house. Uh, for those that have never been, um, do yourself a favor if you're into history, uh, particularly Civil War history, you need to check out Gettysburg. There is so much to do in the town, not just the battlefield. There's a lot of other really cool stuff to do there. So again, uh, do yourselves a favor and Get to Gettysburg. Whew. Um, get to Gettysburg as, uh, if you can. Again, it's a really nice little town. Yeah, it's a tourist trap, but there is a lot of really cool stuff to do there. Now, Creature Feature Weekend started in 2019. I did not go to the inaugural edition of the show. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I believe I was already out in California at the time, so I was not physically here to go to the show. Um, if I was not in California, I'm sure there was a reason why I didn't go. I was probably working or something like that. Yeah, probably working. If I wasn't in California, I was working because 2019, I was like I am now, working like a dog. And of course, last year, because of COVID, they didn't have it. So this year, they came back, and I'm glad that I went. Now, the location where they had it, it's a hotel. A lot of these conventions they'll do in a hotel, like the the ballroom or the rec air, whatever you want to call it. Every hotel is different, but most of these shows are held in these type of venues or a convention center. Um now, many, many years ago, about actually 10 years ago now, I went to a show at that building. Now, it was not called Creature Feature Weekend. It was called Horror Find. Uh, that was actually the very first horror convention I ever went to. And that convention was only around, I think, another year or so. And then they went out of business. And the reason why is because the owners or the promoters were not paying people they were not paying the guests they were not paying the people that were working uh, people were not getting paid and when people don't get paid people get mad and when people get mad they don't go and everything gets screwed up so they stopped doing that show a number of years ago now I had only gone at one time it was the first one that I went I loved it it was a great show met a lot of cool people and uh, yeah since then uh, there was nothing held in that area since 2019 and I know I've discussed here on the channel you know I stopped going to them for a while because 
the prices were getting out of control in terms of the autographs and you had to pay like, okay, you have to pay X amount to get an autograph and then you have to pay X amount to get a picture. And when I first started going, it wasn't like that. Everything was basically one set price and, you know, everyone had a good time and it did become a racket, so to speak, because that was the time that the autograph sales really, really got big online and all you had to do was go on eBay and find the autograph and had a certificate and, you know, people were trying to counteract that by charging more money and personalizing and all this other stuff. You can find out about all that here on the internet. It's all well documented. And it really stopped being fun. And I, and at that time in life, I was, uh, again, not really in the best place. And a lot of the times I just did not really feel like leaving the house and that sort of thing. Now, do I regret that? Yeah, because a, a lot of the guests that were at those shows when I was still kind of going to them, a lot of them have passed away. Adam West, I remember one of the years was one of the big guests and I didn't go and I do regret that. But you know, since I got out of the military two years ago, it was always my plan to get back into going to these. And of course, 2019, I got out. I worked nonstop. I was working, you know, weeks on end without a day off. On your day off, you guys all know it. You just want to come home and you want to sleep and you want to chill. You don't really want to do much. And then I was out at school for, you know, two months and, and towards the end of 2019 and then came back and the cycle started all over. And then in 2020, we all know what happened. The whole world went fucking batshit crazy insane with COVID and everything else that happened. So you didn't have these last year. Um, that's when the virtual stuff started popping up. And a lot of that, um, you know, including the various technical issues, a lot of that stuff turned me off. And a lot of that I didn't look into. Number one, a lot of the prices were really, really ridiculous for the two minute, uh, you know, FaceTime call and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, I just didn't want to invest in that. It was kind of a, I looked at it as a waste of time and a waste of money, more of a waste of money than a waste of time. I prefer to do this. I prefer to go to these shows. And this year they have all pretty much all the major shows have opened back up. A lot of the minor ones have opened back up and I'm glad that they're starting to do these again because Number one, it's a business. You know, these shows, they make money. They spend more money than they make, obviously, because they have to pay everybody. But they do make good money. So it is a business. And the people that run these shows, most of the shows are run by small-time promoters. Now, if you go to, obviously, on the comic book convention side of things, like Wizard World and all that, obviously, those are run by big corporations. Everybody gets a paycheck. Everybody gets a cut. They're not going out of business anytime soon. I could really care about going to those. And they're the ones that can afford to get the big names. And then, of course, you're going to stand in line for three hours. You're going to pay a shit ton of money. And you're only going to get to talk to them for two seconds. And I don't like that. That's why I go to these. So most of these shows are run by small you know, groups of people. Or in some cases, it's a family. Uh, like Monster Mania is run by a family, which that one's coming up next month. I'm definitely going to that one because I love the venue. I love the show. And they always have a, a great show, you know, no matter who's on the guest list or, or that sort of thing. They always put on a great show. I have never had a bad experience at Monster Mania. I love going to those shows. Uh, the one in Hunt Valley, Maryland, I'm never going to the Jersey one. I, a couple years ago, there was some drama going on and I kind of stayed out of that. But and I think I was still in the military as well. But I always went to the Hunt Valley one because that was the one to go to for me. And for the, the general area where I live, in terms of the horror conventions, to me, that is always the one. That's the big one in, um, in my general area, you know, nearby and such. That's the one that I always recommend people. And I can't wait next month because I will be there. But... You know, these shows are run by small business owners, and that's what I like to do. I, number one, you, you do have to pay to get in. I support the small business owners. Um, you know, a lot of the celebrities that go to these, 
You know, a lot of them aren't really acting anymore or directing or whatever their profession was and the roles are getting smaller. So they have to find, you know, stuff to do to help, you know, they got bills to pay too, you know, despite being superstars. So I like to support as many people as I can. And also the vendors, all the vendors are small business owners. They are take, they probably have a full-time job. And they're taking time out of that full-time job to come and put, you know, all this stuff in a truck, drive there, pay for gas, pay for the hotel, do all this stuff to put a show on. And I like to support these people as well. So that's where I really look at it is most of the people that are running these shows and setting up vendors and everything, they're small business owners. And I want to do everything I can to support small business owners. Whether it's at a horror convention, or it's your local comic book store, or what have you, or it's your favorite local restaurant, always support your small business owners because they're the ones that need it more than fucking McDonald's. And I'm just going to put that out there. So I know this is long-winded, but a lot's been going on in the world, and a lot's been going on since I've gone to these, and that all plays a factor into it. You know, despite what people want to think, COVID really fucked things up in terms of this. Because a lot of these people that set these shows up, a lot of these people that, you know, set up tables at these shows and sell their merchandise and sell stuff really, really got fucked last year because everybody went fucking batshit, neurotic, crazy, insane. And it ruined a lot of things. And a lot of these people were pro are probably still that rely on this are probably still in dire straits. And I want these people to succeed because... Small business owners are the way to go, in my opinion. I support these people. So, I know this was long-winded. So, this show was announced. You know, I follow them on the, the one social media platform I'm on. Number one, because they're local. They're a local show. And a lot of the volunteers... Now, most of the people that, like, work the tables with the celebrities and the guy at the door, the guy standing at the corner, making sure everybody's... Being, they don't usually get paid. They're usually volunteers. A lot of the people are local, and I know a lot of the people that were there because I was talking to some of them. I'm like, hey, you're so and Yeah, I am. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to go to this show because I want to support local people. And the local, you know, the person running the show is local, and I figured, okay, cool, you know, help these guys out. And, you know, the guest list was nothing crazy. And, you know, they did, when you went into the autograph room, everyone was separated. Like, they had a six feet minimum and, and all that. You know, obviously, they were adhering to the standards. The cool thing was, you didn't have to wear a mask. The mask was optional. They put that out there. They said, hey, if you want to wear it, great. If you don't want to wear it, that's great, too. You know, just obviously be cautious of you and other people and stuff like that. I felt fine. I felt good. I'm not sick or anything. I'm not, I don't have fucking COVID, nothing. So I'm like, all right, cool. You know, we'll do this and, and we'll go and it'll be a good time. And I was like, all right, sweet. So I didn't wear a mask. A lot of other people weren't wearing a mask. There was a lot, including some of the guests that wore them. And you know what? That's their choice. Don't force it upon people, but that was their choice. It was, you know, optional. So it was cool. And I liked how it was set up. You know, they had, because again, Horror Find, how they did it was very similar way, way back in the day. Was you had your celebrity room and then the room next door, the other ballroom or whatever, conference room or whatever you want to call it. That was where all the vendors were set up. And then they had vendors in the hallway. And that's, a, now I don't know if it's the same people that ran Horror Find or they knew each other or something, but it was run exactly the same way. So I was like, okay, this is going to be easy. This is going to be cool. So I got there, you know, I didn't have to wait in line. Um, I went, because today's Saturday, I'm recording this on Saturday morning, because you can see the sun, kind of. I mean, the light's on, but the sun's coming in a little bit. It's kind of muggy out today, but oh well, it's August. <laughs> um... You know, you walk into the, the main lobby of the hotel and you go right there to the table. And I, I waited in line probably two minutes because there was a couple people ahead of me. Paid, got my wristband and walked in. And I walked around a little bit, looked at the different 
vendors, look at the setup, and then I went into the autograph room. Now, there was only, honestly, two people that I wanted to meet. The third person, I f totally forgot he was going to be there, but I'll get to that in a second. So there was only two people that I wanted to meet at this show. Number one, Vernon Wells. Vernon Wells was Bennett in Commando. He was uh, Wes in Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior. He was in Weird Science. Uh, he was Rancic on Power Rangers Time Force, and he's been in a lot of other movies and TV shows over the year. Always wanted to meet Vernon Wells from what I heard. He was just the nicest guy and always liked doing these shows. And, you know, absolutely true. Everything that has been said about Vernon Wells is true. Just the nicest man. Um, you know, we wore, uh, we talked about Power Rangers. I just asked him, you know, how did you get the gig? And he said, I was encouraged to audition by the stunt coordinator, of course, Koichi Sakamoto, because he had just finished the movie with Koichi. And Koichi said, hey, you know, we're starting, we're, getting ready to do another season of Power Rangers, I think you should audition. And he did, and he got the part, and he said that was the best year of his career, was working on that show. He said it was the best year, and he loved it. He loved the experience, and it was a lot of fun, and that was awesome. And I got a picture. Uh, all the stuff that I picked up will be in the next collection update. Obviously, I'm here at work. I couldn't bring all that here with me, but in the next collection update, I'll show all the goodies and autographs and all that good stuff. Well, a very nice guy. Um, speaking of masks, he was wearing a mask. And when we took the picture, he forgot it was on. And then we took another one with it off. So I thought that was kind of cool. But he was, you know, he, again, he was cool about it. And, again, just a wonderful guy. Nice guy. And uh, if you ever have it, if, he ever, if, if he's ever at a convention that you're going to or, or near, go meet him. He was great. You know, he was wonderful to meet. Um, the other guest that I wanted to meet was Kathleen Kinmont. Kathleen Kinmont was uh, married to Lorenzo Lamas at one point. They did a bunch of movies together, like Charles Bronson and Kathy Ireland did. And, of course, she was on the first four seasons of Renegade as well. And she was in some other stuff. She was in Halloween 4. Uh, she's the chick that gets the shotgun put through her by Michael Myers. Uh, she was bride. She was bride of Reanimator. She was the title character of that movie, and she's done a lot of other stuff over the years. And definitely wanted to meet her. Um, my mom, the first thing she asked me, is she still pretty? I'm like, yes, she is. Uh, does not look a day over she did when she was on Renegade. She's aged very well, which is awesome. And she was very nice. She was very nice and sweet. Um, you know, I asked her, I said, how did they, pra like, practically, how did they do the effects in Halloween where they killed you? And she said, well, they had a, they built, like, a fake wall, and they, like, mounted it to where you can't see behind it or around it on camera. And she sat on a bicycle seat next, to, like, a little bit off the wall, and they drilled holes in the wall, and they had the wire go through, and they, like, put a harness on her. And what they did was they filmed it, again, at an angle to where you couldn't see the wall move. Because she said the wall moved. Like, they built a fake wall onto, like, the real wall. And they just moved it back and forth so people, so they could get behind it to move her. So they had the wires, and they came around and strapped her in. And they pulled them back against the wall so it looked like she was being slammed through the wall. Um, again... Really, really old theater trick. They've been doing that for years, but she said it was very painful because after like an hour, her kidneys were really hurting because she just kept getting slammed. There was no padding or anything. It was just literally her being pulled into a wall by uh, grips or special effects people or whoever was in charge of that. Um, and it was really odd because she said, uh, her crotch really hurt. I don't know why she felt the need to tell me that, but she did. I'm like, okay. But other than that, um, you know, just really nice lady and very, very sweet. And I walked up, I wore my Halloween four shirt and she's like, oh, that's a really cool shirt. I said, yeah, but you're not on it. And she's like, yeah, I'm not on it. Why? I said, I don't know. I didn't make the shirt. I said, 
I, I said, I didn't make the shirt. You know, I, I was thinking about wearing it because you're in the movie. And I said, what the heck? You know, I'll wear it. Whatever happens, happens. But she's like, yeah, I'm not on there. And then she wanted like the artist's name and everything. So hopefully he doesn't get in trouble. But oh, well. And uh, she's like, well, what's your name? I said, my name's Fabio. She's like, oh, I like that. I like the way you said it. And I'm like, and on the outside, oh, oh, okay, yeah, cool. And the inside, I'm like, oh, my God, Kathleen Kimmont's flirting with me. Like, this is a dream come true. <laughs> um, and, you know, we took a picture and got, a, got an autograph from her. And I said, you know, I know your part wasn't that big in that thing you do, but you're great in it. I love that movie. She's like, oh, thank you. She's like, yeah, that. The Vicksburg from Pittsburgh, which is a line from the movie. I said, that's one of my favorites. It is. In terms of uh, 90s comedies and in general, it is one of my favorites. And uh, I love it. And I also told her, I said, I love Renegade. I said, Renegade's my second favorite TV series. She's like, well, what's the first? I said, Walker. She's like, oh, I love Chuck. And I was like, everybody loves Chuck, which is cool. And I said, also... Uh, all the movies that you did with Lorenzo, I love those movies. She's like, oh, all the PM Entertainment ones? I said, yes. I said, they're classics. You know, I grew up with them. Uh, my generation, you know, we grew up on these movies, and, and we still talk about them, and we love them. And, uh, you know, they're they're classics. And I said, somebody really needs to do a documentary on PM Entertainment. And she's like, I agree. She said, they were great, and a lot of the people that we had in those movies were great. I said, yeah. Because she was like Michael Worth. And I'm like, yeah, John Savage, O.J. Simpson. And she started laughing. But, again, very, very nice lady. You know, does not look a day over she did when she was in Renegade or, or uh, Halloween 4. She still looks amazing. And just very, very nice and sweet. And she was really, her and Vernon Wells were the ones I wanted. Now, there was other people there. Um... Charles Cypers was there, who was the sheriff in the original Halloween 1 and 2. I've already met him. Uh, Courtney Gaines was there from Children of the Corn and Back to the Future and the Burbs. I've already met him. So I was kind of picking and choosing a little bit, you know. And then the other guy, now I, I forgot he was going to be there, so shame on me. But Ted Raimi, uh, Sam Raimi's brother, he was in uh, the Evil Dead movies, all the Evil Dead movies. He was different characters in each movie. Um, in Army of Darkness, he's multiple characters, which is awesome. Uh, he was in Patriot Games and Clear and Present Danger. He was one of the CIA analyst guys. He was on Xena and Hercules. You've seen Ted Raimi. He was on Sequest. We talked a lot about Sequest. Totally forgot he was going to be there. Now, it was weird because I think they added him late. From what I remember, and I don't think like he had much time to prepare because he didn't most of these sh shows that you go to, the guests will have like a banner where their name is above their table. He didn't have nothing. He just was like sitting by him, not by himself, but he was like sitting off in the corner and he only had a couple of pictures on his table. So again, I don't know if it was just lack of prep time or what, or he just said, I don't know. And I think that's what it is as well, because I noticed even just walking around looking at the different celebrity tables. A lot of them didn't have a lot of pictures. Now, I don't know if that's like because of COVID, they aren't expect you know, to, that kind of thing, or um, they just couldn't afford. Like, because again, what people don't realize is the celebrity, <clears throat> now they, get, I'm sure they get deals with different companies, but they have to print all those pictures themselves. Like, it's not free, and it's not cheap, because these are, like, really nice, high-quality, glossy photographs. It's not cheap. Um, so I don't know if they just made personal choices to scale back, because, of, like, again, I'm sure COVID had a lot to do with everything. But he only had a couple pictures on the table, and I grabbed one from Sequest. I walked over. He said, you know, I'm Ted Raimi. I said, I'm Fabio, and shook his hand, and really nice guy. I said, you know, Sequest, I love that show. He goes, yeah, it's a weird show. <laughs> and we both started laughing. He said, but it was cool to work on. He said that they had a, I, I didn't know this, the sub that they used for the show was a legitimate, like, 1960s sub that was decommissioned. 
I always thought that they just built it for the show. Like it was just something that they built on a soundstage. And he goes, no, we did film on sound stages, but they just took a real sub and recreated it and doctored it up. And I'm like, I didn't even know that. He goes, yeah, he goes, because they wanted us to feel like we were really, you know, in the Navy and all that kind of thing. I was like, well, that's, that's very interesting. I was not aware of that. And I said, you know, what was it like working with Roy Scheider? He goes, he was very salty. <laughs> and I started laughing. He goes, at that point, he had already been working in Hollywood for like almost 40 years. And he said, that's really weird to think about because I've been in this business for almost 40 years. I said, well, you know, that show was almost 30 years ago, which is scary. He goes, yeah, it is. But he was very cool. Um, you know, we talked about Jonathan Brandis. I said, you know, the system failed him. And he goes, well, you know, his parents were well-meaning, but they were stupid. And he said, I think that was the biggest problem was, you know, his parents looked at him as the actor and not the child. And that, you know, and he said Jonathan had a lot of issues. And, um, you know, unfortunately, what happened is what happened, which is very sad. And what was really cool about Ted Raimi is I fucked up. <laughs> I said, I'm not going to go into specifics, but I said something, you know, that's me. And I'll leave it at that. And, you know, he agreed with me and we started going on about uh, some things that are going on in the world right now. And we were all on the same level and, you know, agreeing with each other. And I was like, wow. A celebrity that's not a fucking nutcase and a celebrity that doesn't have their head up. I'm like, why can't they all be like this? So very, very nice guy. Very, very nice guy. Intelligent, very well spoken. And asked him about John Woo. I said, what was it like working with John Woo? He said, John was great. Um, he said, I was in New Orleans for a week. I filmed one hour and then I was back on an airplane. He goes, it was that quick. Um, you know, he said, John always had a cigarette in his mouth, and he, uh, you know, again, his English was not the best, and they were rehearsing. He goes, I want you to stand there and walk here across the street. Yes, yes, walk across the street, and that's it. Okay, and they did one take. Something went wrong. I don't know if it was in the take or the film or whatever. So they had to do a second take, and then that was it, print, and he was back on a plane. And I was like, wow. He goes, but he said John Wu was great. And I said, and you didn't even get to meet Van Damme. He goes, and I met Van Damme prior to doing that movie, Heart Target. He goes, yeah, he's cool, but he's crazy. I said, we're all crazy. And he started laughing. I'm like, wow, you know, he's cool. But very nice guy. Again, I, I forgot he was going to be there because I was, like, kind of trying to wrap things up. I'm like, oh, Ted Raimi, let me go talk to him. And uh, very cool. And I'm glad that I did. Very cool guy. Very nice dude. You know, big fan of Sequest. Great series. Didn't get the credit. Still doesn't get the credit it deserves in my book. But that's just me. And um, yeah, that was it. The vendors were pretty, pretty good. There was some really, really cool stuff. A lot of, uh, you know, homemade stuff that people did. Different art and, and shirts and all kinds of stuff. Um, a lot of really cool merchandise there. Not a lot of like DVDs and Blu-rays, there were some vendors that had some of that stuff, but it was all common, you know, was nothing uh, rare or anything like that. There was one guy that actually had some laser discs, but again, the laser discs were all the common titles. It was nothing that I needed to pick up for the collection because this lady was walking around and under her arm, she had daylight on laser discs. I'm like, where the hell did she get that? Like, who's got laser discs here? Um, but she had the the regular release, and there's a there's actually a special edition laser disc of Daylight, which I would like to grab one day for the collection. But I was just like, oh, cool laser disc, where? But the one guy that had it was nothing that either I didn't have, or it was uh, you know stuff that I wasn't looking into. But um, yeah, the vendors were pretty cool. You know, mostly got comics. Um, there were, got a bunch of horror comics, a couple of, like, of course you go to a horror convention, you got to get a Fangoria. So I did get one Fangoria, which I'll show. And then, um, I did get a little bit of a surprise. I'm going to keep that a secret. Um, 
when uh when I do the collection update for you guys. But uh yeah, found something really, really cool. But again, the vendors were cool. There was like again a lot of homemade stuff, a lot of comic like a lot of comic books. A lot of comic we got a bunch of comics, which is awesome. And um Again, not really much in the way of DVD or Blu-ray. Now, I don't know if it was just vendors. I don't want to do the show. It was co you know, that kind of thing. Now, uh, there's one vendor. They go everywhere. I've seen them a lot. It's called the VHS Preservation Society. I th I have bought stuff from them before. I remember buying stuff at a different... At, I think at Monster Mania one year, I bought stuff from them. And... um. I look through their stuff, but most of the stuff that they have has either been released on DVD or Blu-ray, or it's just junk. Like, for some reason, they had Bloodsport. Bloodsport's on DVD. I don't know. But I did kind of take a peek, and I just didn't find anything. I'm like, I either already have this stuff on Blu-ray, or it's something I'm not interested in. But whatever. But yeah, I mean, I'm really glad that I went, I went by myself. I usually go to these things by myself because that's just how I am. I like to get in and get out and, and keep to myself. Um, but it was a lot of fun. I'm glad that I went. You know, I'm glad that I got out of the house and did something different instead of just playing video games or going to karate or whatever. And uh, I really had a good time. It was it was really nice to go to these. I you know honestly I do miss going to and I know again a lot recently. You know, talking about what's well, a racket, and because it is. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a business. People got to make money. I get it, but it's just really changed in about the last five or six years, and I don't really like the changes. But that's just my opinion. Um, but I'm really glad that I went again. I miss going to these. You know, being around like-minded people and people that have the same. And there, I was talking to people. You know, it's cool to always converse with people that like things that you like. And I like being in the environment, you know, and I, again, I do miss being in that environment. And I'm, again, I'm glad that I went and, uh, Monster Mania is next month. So in September, so I'm looking forward to that. I will definitely be there for that one and I'll be doing another video like this. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I know you guys enjoyed the pictures I put up. I uh, appreciate it. And, um, you know, again, we're going to jump back into Michael Dudikoff. But until then, take care, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon. See you.